receive adoration, there is none like you. None can be compared to you, O oh God. We give you praise. We celebrate you. Thank you for life. Thank you for preservation. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for bringing us to your presence. Thank you. We know in your presence there is fullness of joy and writing that are pleasures forevermore. We will satisfy us this morning with the pleasures of your presence. Meet everyone at his or point of need. We ask that you will heal the sick, deliver the oppressed, set the captives free, and glorify the name of Jesus. Empower us again. Let no one remain the same. Do it and take all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. One more time, give the Lord a big, big clap and a big, big shout. Hallelujah. Praise God. Joy is mine to welcome you to this wonderful service. I want you to know that God has a miracle with your name on it. Amen. I want you to get ready. In this few minutes, God's going to speak a word to you that will change your life, a word that will reorder things in your favor. Amen. In the name of Jesus. If, you, if you're watching anywhere online, welcome you to, to our Sunday worship service. This is our Sunday worship service, and you are welcome in Jesus' name. Please let us know you are on. Leave us a message. Uh, if you are on Zoom, leave us a message on the private chat. If you are watching online, inbox me or text us. You're going to see a number at the top or bottom of this broadcast, or leave a comment. And I also want you to share this with the press of a button. You can change somebody's life. I want to share a very powerful word with you. Uh, is our month of praising the God of wonder growth. And this morning, we're going to be looking at a very powerful teaching. Uh, in God, will I praise his word of power? In God, will I praise his word of power? That's the secret uh, to great riches and wealth. If you want to be wealthy, you want to be rich, you want to be successful, this is your teaching, this is your day. God has a secret that's going to bring about supernatural abundance into your life. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. So let's get into the word. Um, we are going to look at the teaching. Like I said, it's a lot of praising uh, the God of wonder growth. Amen? Amen. Praise is a key that provokes the wonder working power of God. Praise is a key that provokes the wonder working power or the acts of God. Because God inhabits praises. And God also is fearful in praises. God dwells in the midst of praise. Psalm 22 verse 3, it says, God inhabits the praises of his people. And God is a God of wonders. And when we praise him, he does wonderful things. Exodus 15, 11, it says, God is fearful in praises, always doing wonders. So God wants to do wonders in your life. And the Bible says, in God will I praise his word. Psalm 56 verse 10. In God will I praise his word. In the Lord will I praise his word. But the good news is that the word of God contains uh, so many uh, components. The word of God contains the plans of God. The word of God contains the purpose of God. It contains the commandments of God. The word of God contains the laws of God, the statutes of God. The word of God contains the wisdom of God. And the word of God contains the promise of God. But today we're going to see that the word of God also contains the power of God. Amen. So when we say in God will I praise his word, what are we praising? Because we are looking at growth, what are we praising in his word? We've looked at praising his promises, and we have looked at what it means to praise God's word. That was what we looked at. But today we want to look at, in God will I praise his, uh, the word of his power. In God will I praise his word of, the word of his power. Glory be to God. The word of his power. The Bible says God opposed all things by the word of his power. Uh, Hebrews 1 and 3. So we're looking at the teaching this morning. In God will I praise the word of his power. Hallelujah. So when I praise the word of God, 
I'm praising the power of God. I'm praising the word of God's power. The word of God is powerful. According to uh, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, it says the word of God is alive. It is active and it is powerful. So when I'm praising the, uh, the word, I'm praising the active power of God's word. Yes, the word of God is active. It is alive. It is powerful. The word of God is loaded with power. So when the word of God contains the power of God. So when I'm praising the word, it means I'm recognizing the uh, active power of God. I'm expressing my approval regarding the power of God to change my life, Amen. change my situation. I'm raving about the power of God. Amen. I'm making much about the power of God. I'm exalting his active power and his influence over my situation. Amen. That means when I praise his word, I'm saying, I'm, you know, uh, releasing the active power of God over my situation, Amen. over my circumstance. I'm releasing the influence of God in my circumstance. That is what it means to praise the word of his power. Amen. Because the word of God contains the power of God. Yes. So when I'm praising the word, I'm saying, I'm exalting his active power and his influence over my life. Amen. Can I hear your amen? amen? Number two, when I praise his word, I'm praising his power because the word of God says, wherever the word of God is, there is power. Wherever the word of God is, what there is power. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse number 4. He said, wherever the word of a king is, there is what? Power. And who can contest that power? Who can say to him, what doest thou? So the power of God is resident in his word. The power of God dwells in his word. So when I'm praising the word of God, I'm praising the resident influence and ability of the word of God in my life and my situation. Don't just think that the word of God is ordinary. No, the word of God contains or is the resident place of the power of God. That means every word that God speaks over your life, over your situation, there is a resident power in that word that can influence our lives, influence our situation, and influence our circumstances. So when I'm praising the word of his power, it means I'm recognizing that there is power with me to overcome the negativity and the contrary situations and also to experience my desired growth. I'm saying there is power in the world Amen. that can help me to overcome the negativity and contrary situations around my life. And there is power in the world that can release my desired growth. So in his word, there is what? Power, resident power. Glory be to God. You know, the Bible says in the book of Luke, chapter 5, verse 17, a time came when Jesus was teaching the people, and there were doctors and lawyers and all kinds of situations, but the Bible says, as he was teaching the word, the power of God was present. The power of God was present to heal them all. To heal them all. The power of the Lord was present because in the word is power to heal. Amen. Power to deliver. Power to set free. Amen. So power to overcome and to prevail is in the word of God. Amen. So when you are praising his word, you are praising his power. Okay. You know, another person who understand that the word of God has power was a centurion in scripture in Matthew chapter number 8 uh, from verse 5 there about. The Bible says he had a servant who was sick. That means he had a situation, he had a challenge, you know, uh, what a component of his business was in trouble. <laughs> so he, 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 he sent for Jesus. I said, Jesus, I need you to come and help me. And as Jesus was going to him, he now this revelation and say, oh, if I can praise the word of his power, 
I'll be okay. So he said to Jesus, don't bother coming. Just speak the word only. Speak the word. Because I know that the power is resident in the word. Amen. Speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. My situation shall change. Amen. Matthew 8 and 8. Speak the word only and my servant. Because the word of God contains the power to bring healing to your challenge business. Amen. To bring healing to your relationship. Amen. To bring healing to the pain in your body. There is power in the word. So what I'm praising in God will I praise his word. It means I'm praising the word. I'm recognizing the power, the wonder-working power in the word of God. Amen. Glory be to God. Another man, had a, another, there was another man in scripture who had a challenge. Oh, thank God for the word of God that can handle the challenges of our lives. Amen. You know, there's another man in scripture, the Bible talked about him in John chapter number 4 from verse 49 to 50. His son was sick and was about to die. And he went to Jesus and said, Jesus, I need you. Oh, Jesus is the answer to the world today. Jesus is the word personified. But he went to Jesus and said, I need you to come and help me. And Jesus gave him a word, said, go, thy son, leave it. And the man believed the word that Jesus has spoken because he knows that the power is in the world. Whenever you come in contact with the word of God, you have come in contact with the power of God. Because the power of God is resident in his word. So learn to praise the word of God. Learn to praise the word of his power. Because it will release supernatural ability to handle your challenges, handle your situation. And the man believed the word that Jesus spoke. And as he was going, news came to him and said, oh, the story has turned around. The child that was about to die is now playing with his friends. It's no longer sick. The situation, the business that was about to crumble, it has changed. That, that relationship that was dying, something has come into it. What happened? The power in the world has released the influence, its influence, over that situation, may the word of God influence your life. May the power in the word of God has, has influence over your life and over your situation in the name of Jesus. So learn to praise the word of his power. But there was somebody, you know, as we're talking about people who, who received the word, there was somebody who despised the power of the word. In 2 Kings chapter number 7, uh, the Bible talked of... Uh, a famine, there was a crisis in the nation. There was a serious crisis of lack and famine. Maybe pandemic kind of situation because there was no food anywhere. You know, uh, their own pandemic was hunger. You know, there was no food lack. So it's famine, you know. And the, the word of God came through the man of God, uh, the, the prophet of God in, in 2 Kings of the 7. The man of God said, hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Don't say the Lord, tomorrow, about this time, there's going to be abundance in the land. There's going to be so much. But somebody was there, you know, a very intellectual person who doesn't know that our God is a supernatural God and, the, and his power is resident in his word. So that when he speaks the word, the word will come to pass. When he speaks the word, the word will be performed. The word will, will come true. And the man said, I don't see how this can happen. I don't see how this can be done. I want to admonish you. When God speaks a word over your life, you don't need to see how. Just believe that it will happen. And the prophet, uh, the man uh, told the king and said, oh, don't mind this man that is speaking God's word. He's, the, he's just trying to excite us because there is no way there can be abundance from what I can see. You know, all the calculation is telling me it's not going to work. But the Bible says it despised the word. And the prophet said to him, you shall surely see it. God will make things happen, but you will not taste of it. That's what happened to those who doubt God's word. When anybody despises the word, the Bible says, he that despises the word shall be destroyed. Proverbs 13, 13. He would despise the word of God. Will, will, will open himself to devastation 
and destruction. Why? Because he has uh, despised the power of God. Amen. You know, he has, you know, uh, relegated the power of God to, you know, a low place rather than esteem it. So the person is going to become a victim, a chief victim of his or her circumstance. And the Bible says in verse 17 of that second Kings that the word of God actually came to pass. There was second Kings chapter seven, I mean, chapter, uh, chapter seven, verse 17. The, the word of God came to pass and the man saw it just as the word was declared it, but the people trampled upon him such that he died. <laughs> just as God, as the man of God said, you know, he was trampled upon, he couldn't taste of it. He was destroyed because he despised the power in the word of God. So as you are praising, you know, uh, the word of his power, you are releasing the influence of God. You are activating the power of God in your life because the word, the power is resident in the word. Somebody say the power, the power of God, the power of God is resident, resident in the word of God. Word you of see, God. Even as I'm speaking to you, you're going to begin to have a different value for the word of God. That's why last week we talked about esteeming the word above everything else. Because why do we need to esteem it? Because there is power, resident power in the word. It's not ordinary. Glory be to God. You know, it's not ordinary. The power that can cure, it can kill, it can make a life, it can change situation. Glory be to God. You know, hallelujah. hallelujah. You know, if you go, if you ever, if you have ever been to a laboratory. When you see acid in a bottle, a clear bottle, it looks like water. Yep. <laughs> acid is not in a clear bottle, it looks like water. But it's not water. <laughs> don't try, don't, don't, don't try that at home. Don't try to drink it. Even though they put it in the refrigerator, it looks like water. It's not water, it can kill. So when you come in contact with the word of God, don't think it is ordinary. It contains the power of God Amen. to change your life, to change your situation. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Number three, why do we, in, in, what is in the word, you know, true faith will also understand that, the, that God opposes all things by the word of his power. God opposes all things by the word of his power. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse number 3. It said, God uphold all things by the word of his power. So when I'm praising the word, I'm praising the upholding power of God in my life. That means whatever the word declares or whatever the word has spoken over my life will never fall apart. Amen. Whatever the word declares or whatever the word has formed, whatever the word has, you know, created in my life will never fall apart Amen. because the word of God, there is power in that word to uphold all things. Yes, he upholds all things. That means he keeps it together. Amen. He keeps it intact. So whatever God has done in my life by the power of his word shall be forever. Yes. It can't fall apart. Yes, it can't fall apart. Because there is power in the world. That's why the world that God created has not fallen apart. The devil can be angry, you know, uh, principalities and powers can be met, but God opposed all things by the word of his power. And that is why when you begin to praise the word, everything that God does in your life, in your situation, will never fall apart. Your dreams will not fall apart. Amen. I say your career will not fall apart. Amen. In the name of Jesus, your relationship will not fall apart Amen. because there is power in the world to uphold all things. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I say glory be to God. Hallelujah. Number four, what is in the world that we are praising? The word will never be void of power. Amen. The word of God will never be void of power. Because in the word, there is power to accomplish whatever the word, uh, whatever God has proposed. Amen. There is power to accomplish in Isaiah 55, verse 10 to 11. That's why we say in God, when I praise what I'm praising God's power to accomplish. He said, for as the rain cometh down and the snow from 
and returned not thither, but watered the earth, and make it to bring forth and board, that he may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be, God say, that goeth forth out of my mouth, it will not return unto me void. That means it will never be void of power, Amen. but it shall accomplish that which I place and prosper in the thing what where to I have sent it. Amen. So when I'm praising the word of God, uh, the word of his power, I'm commending the word of God's power by saying and acknowledging that all things are what possible in my life, that whatever God has spoken will be accomplished. It will come to pass. My wonder growth is possible because God has said it. It will happen just as God has promised it. There is power inherent in all the promise of God to bring it to pass. Can I hear you? Amen. amen. That's why I say God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said and shall he not do it? Has he spoken? And shall he not make it good? Numbers 23, verse 19. So whenever God speaks, there is power to accomplish in the world. So whenever I'm praising the world, I'm praising the power to, uh, to accomplish. Can I hear you? Amen. I'm saying like Mary, uh, like the angel told Mary, you know, an angel came to Mary and said, hey, Mary, hear this. You are about to conceive, you are about to have a miracle child. And Mary said, how can this be? Seeing I know not a man, you know, I, how can this happen? Then the angel said to her, the power of the almighty shall come upon you and overshadow you. Before with God, nothing shall be what? Impossible. Nothing shall be impossible. There is power to accomplish whatever God has proposed. And I want to prophesy that whatever God has proposed in your life, there is power to accomplish it. So when I'm praising God's word, I'm saying, God, you are omnipotent. Your word can be impotent in my life. Amen. You are the omnipotent God. Your word can be impotent in my situation. God, you are all powerful. Your word can lack potency in my circumstance. So when I'm praising his word, I'm praising his omnipotent power and I'm releasing the potency, the potent ability of God. I praise the potency of his word. May that word begin to walk wonder in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. May we begin to see the wonder of God, God's, uh, the wonder of God's uh, power in your life, in your situation as you praise his word. Now, let me take us deeper. Are you getting blessed this morning? Is this powerful? Yes. Let me now show you now how the power of God's word can help my wonder growth, your wonder growth in your life, or any aspect of your life, you know, uh, whatever aspect of your life you want to see God's power, you know, uh, and what aspect of my life does this power, this word power release, uh, does this word release power to grow? Because we're talking about growth. Did you get what I'm saying? I want to talk to you now. I want to show you, you know, how the power of God's word can help your wonder growth, and what aspect of my life does this, uh, what power, you know, help to grow? What aspect? I like to be specific because God is specific. Are you listening? Yes, so we have seen in this first few minutes, I mean, that what the word of God contains, it contains his power, and we have seen that. That's why we praise his word, and, you know, power for different aspects. But I want to show you how it can help your life. And this is very interesting. What aspect of my life does this word release power to grow? What aspect of my life? Glory be to God. Amen. Number one, this will interest you. Your finances or resources. The word power helps our finances and our resources. The power uh, word of his, uh, the word of his power releases ability in our lives. This is the first thing now. The, the word of his power releases ability in our life to get wealth or to create wealth, to become rich. Hello, somebody. Yeah. God wants 
you to be rich. God doesn't want you to be broke. Amen. God wants you to be rich and successful. And God wants you to have abundance and to have surplus. But what will help you to have that abundance and surplus and to be rich is the power of his word. The power of his word releases, you know, uh, ability to create wealth mm -hmm. and, you know, get rich, you know, and create wealth in our life. To get wealth, to create it, and to become rich. You know, the, you know the word of God is creative yes, is. because we understand that through faith, the walls were framed or created by what? The word of God. So the word of God gives us creative ability to create wealth and to get wealth. Amen. Can I hear an amen? amen? Hebrews 11 verse 3, it says, we understand that the walls were framed through faith, we understand that the walls were framed or created by the word of God. Hallelujah. So the word of God has creative power and creative ability. But interestingly also, in Deuteronomy chapter number 8 and verse number 18, it says, you should remember the Lord your God, for it is he that gives you what? Power to get wealth. Power to create wealth. Power to become rich. Hallelujah. How does he do it? Deuteronomy 8, 18. What's the question? Okay, you're asking for the verse. Okay. It's Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. Thou shalt remember the Lord your God. That means remember to praise his word because once you are praising him, God is going to give you a word Amen. that will give you creative ability to create wealth and to become rich. You will not be broke another day in your life because when God begins to speak his word to you, you're going to become inspired, you're going to become creative, you're going to be able to create wealth and to get rich amen. and to get wealth. Can I hear you? Amen. amen. Remember he said in Isaiah 48 verse 17, he said, I am the Lord that teaches you to profit. Amen. So when God speaks to you, he will give you ideas, creative instruction on how to get wealth, how to create wealth, how to become rich. There is power, the word of God has the power to release creative ability for people to be rich. Many have despised the word. They've discounted the word. That's why they are broke. But if you get the word from God, he will show you the first thing I'm showing you, the area that the word of God will release power to grow. Amen. It's our finances and our resources. So I can announce to you that your days of abundance is here. Amen. Your broke days are over because Amen. you're going to begin to receive creative abilities to get work and to become rich in your life, Amen. to become successful. Abundance is going to flow Amen. in your life because God's going to speak. You see, the power to make rich and create wealth is released when I praise his word. As you praise his word, you know, many people despise the word, but he said, I'm the Lord. I teach you to profit, to gain, to have more, to succeed. I'm going to teach you by my word. Amen. You know, so when I praise his word by responding to it, by esteeming his word. You know, I remember as I'm speaking to you, the Holy Spirit is bringing to my mind uh, the man, uh, Peter. Are you okay? The man, Peter, uh, Apostle Peter, he had a failing business. And the Bible says he has toiled all night and caught nothing. He wasn't doing well. He wasn't succeeding. Then Jesus came and said, hey, Peter, do you want to succeed? Say, yes, it's okay. I'm going to give you a word right now that will end this trouble in your life. You're going to become rich. Your, your net is going to be filled with fishes, and your boat is going to overflow with abundance. Plenty is going to show up in your life. Amen. And he told Peter, he gave Peter a word. And Peter began to do what most of us do with the word. We began to, you know, uh, ignore the word or uh, despise the word rather than praising the word, esteeming the word, you know, and making a big do of the word. Then Peter saw that, look, his story was not changing. So he came to himself in Luke chapter 5, verse 5. He said, Master, I've toiled all night and I've gotten nothing, but nevertheless, at your word. Now he has esteemed his word. He has put value in his word. The word that carries the power to make me rich. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it on. 
Peter began to praise the word, don't forget we said about praising the word is what's doing the word. When he began to do the word, the Bible says, what happened? And when he had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their nets began to break. Luke 5, 5 to 6. Yes, when, he, when they had this done. So you praise the word by what? Doing the word. Don't forget we say doing the word means we are praising the word. So when you do the word, you're going to enter into abundance. Amen. Glory be to God. Yes, so Peter praised the word. And he began to experience blessing. That's why the Bible says, be doers of the word, not just hearers, only deceiving your own self. He said, if any be a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed in all, this woman, this person, shall be blessed in all his deeds. You want to be blessed? Be a doer of the word, because there is power in the word to make you creative. There is power in the word to make you rich. Amen. Can I hear your Amen. amen. Many people are looking for riches from all other places, like from so many places, but the power to make us rich is in the word. God said, I'm the one to teach you to profit. Can I hear it? Amen. amen. So, but how can you be rich? You have to praise his word. Recognize that the word has what it takes to make you rich. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I said the word has what it takes to make us rich. Amen. That's why the Bible says in Psalm 35, 27, it said, let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Let them say continually, let the Lord be what magnified that has what pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. God has pleasures in your well-being. Yes, God has pleasure in your prosperity. So you praise his word. The word of God is not grievous. The word of God is not to deny you of anything. The word of God wants to give you everything that you need in your life. Everything you need to succeed. Everything you need to be successful. That's what you need to want. That's why the, the psalmist said in Psalm 34 verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise what shall continually be in my mouth. I will continually praise that word because when I praise his word, I will be inspired. When you despise the word, you're going to be despised. You're going to be discouraged because you're not going to have the idea the solution that can bring about, you know, the riches and the breakthrough. But once you begin to praise the word, then you're going to find breakthrough Amen. in the word. I see your breakthrough coming in the name of Amen. Jesus. I see your prosperity coming in the name of Jesus Christ. So the word of God should not grieve us. The word of God comes to give us what we need, the ideas we need. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I say glory be to God. Hallelujah. You know, when you begin to read the word of God, ideas are going to come into your mind that you never knew, you know, was before or was there. It suddenly light is going to shine. Don't forget, it's in the entrance of his world. What? It giveth light. Light is solution. Light is direction. Light is inspiration. Amen. The entrance of his world, it giveth light and it giveth understanding Amen. to the symbols. Psalm 119 verse 30. So you get inspired by the word of God. Glory be to God. I said, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many years ago, I got a very powerful, I mean, revelation. I mean, every time I look into the world, every time I look into the world, I study the world, I see how I can be rich in the world. <laughs> how you can be rich. It's all in the world. It's all in the world. That's why I love the world. You're going to find answer to your, I mean, solution to your problems in the word of God. Once you learn to praise the word, you know, we're talking about praising the word as esteeming it above your necessary food, as reading it, meditating on it. Many people don't read the word. They don't meditate on it. They don't pay attention to it. So they don't have ideas to make, to be rich. Amen. Yeah. You can have ideas to be rich. You can be picking money on the street when you have, when you, when you pay attention to the word. And that's what God wants for you. Amen. That's what God wants for us. And I declare and I prophesy again that your broke days are over Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, what does the word, you know, uh, release power for in my life? Or what, what does the word release power in my life to do as it relates to my growth? When I praise the power of his word, I begin to operate a covenant cycle of giving and receiving. Amen. Giving and receiving. 
supernaturally. So, in works in your life, you need to receive or praise the word that God has given as it relates to giving and what? Receiving. Because the power to give and to receive abundance is released when we praise his word concerning giving and receiving. When we acknowledge that word, you know, the word of God says in Luke chapter 6, um, verse 38, uh, it says what? Give and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over, shall men give to your bosom. But you see, it's the word that will make you receive in abundance. But you have to receive the word. You have Luke 6, 1. Glory be to God. Luke 6, 38. You know, but that's, what, that's what you need. The power to get is in the power to give. Amen. That's the word of God. If you don't praise that word, if you don't see that word and okay. praise it, then you can't operate the circle of abundance receiving supernaturally. Okay. You won't know how it's going to happen, but you're going to see things begin to come your way. Amen. People are going to begin to give to you. Doors will begin to open to you. Amen. God will schedule abundance in your future. Amen. He will line up the right people, right breaks for you. He will open doors that you can't even open on your, on your own self, you know, by your own ability. You know what Jesus said in John chapter 10? Verse 17 to 18, Jesus said, this is why my father lost me. This is why my father lost me. He said, because I laid down my life. You know, he said, no man take it from me. Nobody force me. I do it. I laid down my life. What? That I may what? Take it again. He said, what? This commandment. And what have I received of my father? So God has given me his word. I said, look, the way to your greatness, Jesus, is for you to lay down your life. Give of yourself. Give of your time. Give of your resources. And you're going to get it back again. Amen. So God gave him the commandment. So, But Jesus said, this commandment have I received. That's the word he has received. Many of many people can receive the word of God. You see, he said he came to his own. And his own what? Receive him not. But the power is in what you receive. The power you release is in the commandment you receive. Amen. The power you release in your life and your situation is in the commandment that you have received. The word you receive determines the power you release. Amen. I will say it again. The word you receive determines what? The power you release. If God says give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shake it together, running over. Men will give to your boss, whether they like you or not, whether they care about you or not, they will be under obligation, under compulsion to give to you. They will be under compulsion to open the door to you because you have released a power that will compel them. You see, men ordinarily don't give anything to nobody. Men naturally don't give. So you need a power. And he says, the heart of men, they are in the hand of the Lord. So how does God twist men's heart to help you, to favor you, to open doors for you? It will, it will start by you receiving that supernatural commandment to give. Amen. You see, you only, you only do one thing, but you get like six things. Can I show you? Yes. Go to Luke 6, 38. The power is released when you give. Look at it. It says what? Give, comma. That's the only thing you need to do. Number two, it shall be given to you. One. Number two, good measure. Number three, press down. Number four, shaking together. Number five, what? Running over. Number six, what? Men shall give to your bosom. So you do one thing. I release six to your life, giving to you. Yeah. So the power is in, the power we release Amen. is based on the word we receive. Because there's power in that word. And that was what happened to a woman in 1 Kings chapter 17. The Bible says in 1 Kings 17 from verse 13 to 16, God said to his prophet Elijah, I said, go, there's a widow, I have commanded her to release her last, to give her last meal. And when Elijah went there, he told her, say, look, hey, woman, 
for you. I'm gathering my last, I'm gathering here to gather just two sticks to cook my last meal and to eat and to die. And the man of God said to him, fear not, go and do as you have said, but make thereof a little cake first and give it to me, bring it to me. After, make for, for, for you and for your son. For those here the Lord, you see that? Once you give it, what's going to happen? The barren of meal shall not waste. The cruise of oil shall not fail until the day, and the Lord begin to send rain into your house. She had an option. Is she going to praise the word of his power or is she going to despise the word of his power? But this woman, the Bible says, she obeyed. She praised the word. She said, oh, thank God. I have found a word that's going to change my life. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat what? Many days. You see that? Many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to what? To the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. So the word contains the power to continue to multiply the resources in this woman's house, to continue to increase the money in her account. There is power in that world to bring multiplication, increase into our life. So once you praise the word by what? Doing it. By first receiving it and doing it. The problem is a whole lot of time people get the word, they despise it, they downplay it, you know, and they don't do it. So they miss the power. But the power to release abundance is in the word. Can I hear you? Amen. So when you praise the word, this was also the secret of the church of Macedonia. The secret of the church of Macedonia. The Bible talked about uh, the church in Macedonia in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 from verse number 1. Their story is very powerful. Look at it here. It says, it was, it was like an admonition. It said, my brethren, we do you it to copy, right? The grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. How that what in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy. You see that? They were afflicted, but they found joy. They began to praise abundance of joy. And what? Their deep poverty abounded what? Unto the riches of their liberality. They are, they, in their poverty, they were praising the word of God. What were they doing? For to their power, you see that power came. I can bear them record beyond their power. They were willing of themselves, praying us. They were praying us with much entreaty that we should receive the gift. They were giving. They were poor, but they were giving. They said, "Look, our poverty can change. Prosperity can come. Once we have a word, we are going to obey this word. We are going to stimulate this circle." of giving and receiving. And the, 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 the apostles, they weren't going to receive their offering. But they began to say, please, don't keep us in poverty. We are glad to do it. We are not sorrowful. We are happy to give. Can I hear you? Amen. And they take upon us what the fellowship of ministering to the saints. This they did, not as we hope, but what? First gave their own selves unto the Lord and unto us by the will of God. In so much that we desire that titles that as he has begun, so he will feel the same also in you. Can I hear an amen? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 8 and verse 9 there, it says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became what? Poor, that you through his poverty might be rich. The more you try to make yourself poor, the richer you become. There is he that scattered and yet what increases. There is it that we told them more than it means, and it tends to poverty. So the power to become more is in the power to give. But you have to praise the word and activate the cycle of giving and receiving. Amen. That's why the Bible says, let the people praise you, oh God, let the people praise you. Then the earth shall yield that increase. What is praise? Doing the word that God has commanded. You know, working in the cycle, this covenant cycle of giving and receiving, it will bring abundance to your life. Can I hear you? Amen. amen. Remember, when you do the word by giving, you are praising the 
and your book, abundance and release harvest into our lives. Amen. That is how you see your resources grow and increase abundantly until it overflow. Can I prophesy? Increase and overflow is coming into your life in the name of Jesus Christ. As you praise his word of power, yeah, the power to make you rich. Don't make don't make God's word look like a liar. You are aware, yeah. When God says, Oh, when you give, you're gonna receive, say, Oh, I don't believe that. Then you are saying God is a liar. You just negated the power. You made the power of non-effect in your life and your situation. But when you say, Oh, God has said I should do this because God cannot lie, I believe it and I do it, Amen. then you're gonna see the power flowing in your life. Amen. Number three, are you getting blessed? Amen. When I praise the word of his power. I'm also releasing the power of God to eat and enjoy the riches and wealth that God has given me. Can I hear an amen? amen? You also need to, you know, when you praise the word of his power, you are releasing, you know, uh, the power to eat and enjoy the riches and wealth that God has given you. Like I said, you're going to be rich, you're going to be wealthy, but it's not enough to be rich and wealthy. You need to be able to release the power to eat it. <laughs> May you eat of the riches and the word that God is bringing your way in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah, because you can be rich, and there are many rich people who don't eat their riches. They don't enjoy it. Yeah, they can't enjoy it because they are not praising God, uh, the word of his power. They are thinking their own power got them that riches. So that's why they are not enjoying Rather than being joyful, they are sorrowful. Rather than being happy, they are, they, so many bad things are happening around them. Even though they've gotten the riches and the wealth. Look at the scripture here, Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 18. This is very powerful. I say this is very powerful. Amen. It says, Behold, that which I have seen, it is good and comely for one to eat and drink and to enjoy the good of all his labor that he taken under the sun. All the days of his life. So it's good to enjoy all your labor, right? Mm -hmm. With God given him, for this is his portion. Every man also to whom God has given what? Riches and wealth, and has given what? The wow. power to eat their. See, that's what we're talking about. The power. When you praise the word of his power, you are praising the power to eat. To eat the good and to take your portion. I want to rejoice in all your labor. He said, this is the gift of God. You see that? The power is a gift from God. Look at the next verse there, verse number 20. It says, for he shall not much remember the days of his life, because what? God answered him in the joy of his life. You see that now? That's where the answer comes from. God allows him because he's praising the word of God that has made it possible for him to get the world. So God answered him and gives him the power to eat the earth. Can I hear you? Amen. amen. Yeah. There are people who can eat. Remember, I can give you, remember Herod. There's a king in, in scripture called Herod in Acts chapter 12 from verse 21 to 23. One day he went and he gave great speech, a great speech, and people began to shout. You know, when people give great speeches, like most presidents in America, when they retire, the first thing they do is to give speeches to get money from the people they have favored in government. They'll go and give speeches and they give them money. So when he made a great speech and they gave him money and they say, oh, this is very powerful, rather Acts chapter 12, verse 21 to 23. Acts 12, 21 to 23. Rather from, for him to say, oh, Lord, I praise your word. He began to say, oh, man, I'm so good. I'm really, really good. I'm a great orator. And the Bible says, you know, are you there? He sat upon it, and Acts 12, 21, and upon a set day, Herod, arrayed in a royal apparel, sat upon his throne and made a great oration unto the people. Go to the next verse. And the people gave a shout, saying, it's the voice of a God, not a man. Yeah, I'm talking about power to eat. And immediately, the angel of the Lord smote him because what? He gave not God the glory. And he was eating of worms and gave up the ghost. Did he have the power to eat? No, he was eating rather. He was eating. Can I hear you? You will not be eating in the name of Jesus Christ. So this also we see. Look, go back to it. 
Genesis chapter 6. Let me let us see something here. Very powerful. We're talking about God you releasing the power to eat when you praise his word. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. This this is this is you know exemplified in this scripture here. Look at it. Amen. There is an evil which I have seen under the sun, and it is what common among men. So I say common. When you begin to praise his word, the word of his power, you are removing yourself from this common group. You are entering a special group. Can I hear it? Amen. You are becoming specialized. Amen. No more common. You are no more regular. You are becoming important to God. Amen. What is common? He said, a man to whom God has given what? Riches, wealth, and honor. So God gives that to people. It's not denied. So that he wanted what? Nothing for his soul of all that what? He desired. Yet, God given him what? Not God given him not power. There's a not there. He gave him not power to eat thereof. But what a stranger eateth it. Aha. Uh -huh. Are you seeing that? So now that's where many people in the world, this is the difference between believers and unbelievers. You know, a believer, that's why you need to praise the word of his power. He says, You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he that gives you the power to give you praise him and give him glory and honor him and celebrate him because he's the one that's given us the power to get well. But unbelievers say, Oh, that I got this power, I'm so smart, I'm so intelligent. That's why they get the wealth, they get the riches, but they don't have the power to eat it. Some people are just walking. He said they, they, will, they will gather it for somebody else, you know. But what a stranger eateth it. This is vanity and it what is an evil disease. Something negative takes it up from them. That's why most rich people who don't know God are never happy. Because you are seeing the world, but you don't see the worms eating them behind the scene. You don't know the worms eating their relationship, eating their lives, eating their business, eating their mind, eating them up. Because why? They are not praising the word of his power. They are not recognizing God as the source of their supply. Amen. But your own story is changing in the name of Jesus. I say you will not be in that, that will not be your portion. You will eat the riches that God will give to you. You will eat the abundance that God will bring into your life in the name of Jesus. That's why the prophecy in Isaiah 66 or 65, Isaiah 65, 21 to 3 is very important. It says, I love this prophecy and this is a prophecy for you as we begin to round up. I don't even know that my time has passed, is fast and it will be to God. All right. It says what? And they shall build houses. Hey, you will build houses, Amen. not just one. You will build houses. When you praise the word of his power, it will make you rich and make you build houses. You're going to have subdivisions to yourself. Amen. Oh, I didn't hear your believing. Amen. Your amen can be louder. Amen. You're going to have subdivisions to yourself in past cities Amen. in the name of Jesus. And what inhabits them? Amen. That means you're going to enjoy them. Yes, and they shall plant vineyards. You will start businesses. Amen. And eat the fruit of them. Yes, you shall not build and another inhabit. Amen. You shall not plant and another eat. Amen. Yeah. That's a very powerful, that's the power. The power to eat the wealth and the riches that God has given unto you. Yes. He said, for the days of a tree are the days of my people. That means you will live long to enjoy Amen. the riches I, I prophesy longevity Amen. to your life. And my elect shall long what? Enjoy the works of their hand. You will enjoy the works of your hand. Amen. I prophesy you will enjoy the words of your hand. God is saying, when you praise the word of his power, you are releasing longevity into your life to enjoy the work of your hand. We just saw that somebody can build and not inhabit. Yeah, he can plant and not eat. He can be rich and not have the power to eat it. That is not your portion. God is saying you will build houses and inhabit them. You will plant vineyards and eat the fruit thereof. You will, you will build and you will inhabit. You will plant and eat the fruit. And you shall long enjoy the, the works of your hand. He said, what? They shall not live 
You will not labor in vain. I say you will not labor in vain as you praise the word of his power. Nor bring forth what for trouble, for they are the blessed, they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and they are offsprings with them. Even your children's children Amen. will enjoy that in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. That's what happens when we praise the word of his power. We are releasing the power. You see, don't miss this. And I don't know if I'm able, I've said it clearly enough. When you praise the word of his power, you release his power to make you rich and to enjoy the riches, to secure it so that you can eat it and the stranger should not eat them from you. So when you praise, that means you are saying, you know, uh, it's not my might, it's not my ability, it's not my power. God is your word Amen. that is at work. And I recognize that this is the doing of the Lord in my life. And I'm praising that word. Yes, then it releases the power to eat. Because, so that's, that's the difference. That's the difference. You know, as we are reading this scripture, there are people who build houses. They can't live in them. Yeah. I've seen even people in reality who have spoken to me who have said, look, I have a big house. But I can tell you, I really sleep in it. And I look at the person. Of course, the person doesn't go to church. He doesn't believe in God. He doesn't serve God. <laughs> so somebody is sleeping there. <laughs> in, some, in some other countries, you know, the, the uh, what's it called? The man is busy flying like a bird all over the place. The gardener is enjoying all the, <laughs> eating the fat, enjoying the sweet. But the person is not enjoying it. So it's very important. It's very important we get this revelation. So when we praise the word of his power, we are releasing the power, not we are releasing power to get wealth, right? We are also releasing, uh, we are activating the circle of giving and receiving that makes us rich. We are also releasing power to eat whatever we have been able to gather. Can I hear you? Amen. Amen. Yes. Look at Deuteronomy 8. Uh, verse 17 as we close. Wow, this so, went so quick. I'll, I'll continue on Wednesday Amen. to the other points. I didn't know time went so far, but I mean, we're blessed. Amen. I say we're blessed this morning. I want to show you what the power can accomplish in your life again, but at least we have seen the most important one, which I believe a whole lot of people want to hear, how to be wealthy and how to be rich is to praise the word of his power. There is riches in that word. You remember even Peter, when he came to meet Jesus, he said, Jesus, the tax people are after us. How can we pay our taxes? Jesus said, oh, there is a word. There is a word. I'm going to give you a word. If you can praise it, it's going to be well with you. Amen. And he told him, you know what? Just pick up your hook. Go to the sea. There's going to be a fish with money in his mouth. Woo! Intellectuals. Say, oh, man. I'm talking about a supernatural God. You see, that's what we're talking about, a supernatural God. God is not limited to natural ways of doing things. God has ways, unlimited ways by which he can do things. So that's why when he speaks his word, he speaks according to his power. Yeah, and his power is omnipotent. Amen. He can find money anywhere. You know, where there's, he can make a way where there seems to be no way once you follow his word. So look at it here. He said, don't say in your heart, my power and what my might has gotten me this world. Don't say, don't say. That's it, that's it, that's it. Thou shalt, thou shalt not say in your heart, my power and my might has gotten me this world. What shall you do? You should praise the word of his power. Once you despise the word of God, you are indirectly saying, when God says, Give and you shall receive. I say, I don't know, I can't give. You are saying, oh, I have a better way to get in it. God says, okay, no problem. You might even go get it when you get it, but it's not enough to get it. But to eat it is another thing. So you see, you are, you are going to begin to cross a whole lot of hurdles. Number one, hurdle to get, which some people have been able to get. Oh, I, I'm rich. I'm, oh, wow. I'm, 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 wow. I didn't need to go to God. I didn't, oh, all right, okay. Beautiful, beautiful. Are you eating it? <laughs> are you enjoying it? <laughs> yeah, are you enjoying it? That, that, I mean, you need to you need to speak to a whole lot of rich people. You're gonna be rich. I don't want your kids to be like this when you become rich. Yeah, you're gonna need to speak to a whole lot of rich people that the 
truth that if they marry them, they are not enjoying it. They are not enjoying their riches. They are under pressure 24 7. Yes, yeah. Somebody else is eating it, not them. Even if you give them food, say, no, I don't have time for this. <laughs> they, they can't eat, but somebody else will eat it. They go to a big restaurant, order big meal. Once they want, one day, the, the, the call the person, the person says, Oh, I, I can't make it that country. Please come and take this food. Come <laughs> and take it away. The waiter just, you know, to, to go back, <laughs> eat all the blessings. But well, that will not be your portion in Amen. Jesus' name. That will not be my portion. Amen. But God is giving us the power to get wealth. Can I prophesy one more time? Yes, You're going to be rich. Amen. You're going to be successful. Amen. God will give, as you praise the word of his power, the power will be released to make you rich in the name of Jesus. Do you want to lift up your voice and give him praise? I believe we have heard something today. Lift up your voice and give him praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. Thank God for the word of his power that has influence over your life to change the situations and circumstances. And essentially today, what God has shown us is that there is power to get wealth. Remember the Lord your God. Say, Lord, thank you, Father, Lord, for power to get wealth. I receive, the, I praise your word, and I tap into that and activate and I release that power to get wealth, to create wealth, to swim in riches, to enjoy abundance in my life in the name of Jesus. Father, I have seen today, oh God, Lord, by your, by your power, I activate and I position myself to become, oh Lord, so I will give, so I can receive in abundance. I will give with joy. I will receive in abundance in the name of Jesus. I will swim in plenty. In the name of Jesus, pray and say, God, every word that you bring my way, I will continue to pray so I can enjoy it and eat it. Thank you for giving me the power to eat what you have blessed me with. I will not plan for another to, in, to, to, to eat. I will not build for another to inhabit. I will not enjoy the works of my hand because this is my heritage. As someone who is praising the Lord, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Talk to God right now. Talk to him. Rabba, praise him. Praise his word. Lord, thank you. Your word are not grievous. Your word are sweet to my taste. I love your word. I'm going to praise your word. I'm going to praise your promises. Thank you, Father. I give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. The promise to make me wealthy. I praise it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Can I show you something the Lord showed to me? Uh, yesterday, when I was meditating, uh, Psalm 56, verse 10, the New Living Translation, we talked about it, but I didn't even see the, that it was clearly stated in the New Living Translation when we talked about it. Uh, look at it here. When we talk about his promises, the New Living Translation, he said, in God will I praise his word. And I taught you and I said, in God will I praise uh, his word. Is that the New Living Translation? Oh, in your own, uh, oh no, I praise your word. Yes, Lord, I praise your word. Oh, my name new translation says something different than that. Do you have, um, try another, do you have NIV? And the NIV didn't get it, but I think it was NIV. That's, try NIV, let me see. Uh, not NIV. Oh, no. Let me get, can you get another living translation from your Bible? Do you have another Bible? Um, Okay, try American Standard, let's see what I think it was New Living Translation. My Bible, you know, they keep updating this. What, what did good news say? Yeah, okay. The Lord whose promises I praise. Okay, that's it. That's what I wanted to say. You see, the word contains the promises. We talked about it in the last lecture. So, in God, I praise his promises. So, that promise to make you wealthy is what we're talking about. So, the, what we're looking at today in God, I praise the word of his power. So I saw this and it was just that in that thing. In the Lord, I praise his promises. So, you know, I say, well, I praise his word. What are you praising? You are praising his promises. Now you are praising his power. So you are releasing the influence and the ability and the authority of God to overwhelm your situation and your circumstance. Amen. Your, your, the word of God will never be void of power. Amen. There's power in that word to make Amen. you worthy. Somebody say, my broke days are over. My broke days are over. Say, my abundant days are here. My say, my God is a God of more than enough. My God is a God of more than enough.
God overflow his word and I release the influence of his word over my life to become creative, to get wealth, to create wealth, and to become rich in the name of Jesus. Lord, I give you praise. I give you glory in the name of Jesus. Celebrate that word because your poverty has lost you. Insufficiency is departed from your life. Words and riches are in your heart right now. They have come to your home. That resident word, as it dwells in your heart, abundance will overflow. Give him praise. Give him praise. Thank him. His commandments are not grievous. Yes. The circle of abundance is in giving and receiving. And I do it cheerfully in the mighty name of Jesus. I praise that word. Lord, I give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have praise. Father, Lord, we thank you for your presence that is mighty here. Thank you for your power, the power to heal. I see healing, healing the, 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 the finances, healing the situation, healing the resources of God's people. I see the miracle power of God in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory in the name of Jesus. I want to pray for you. Maybe you are watching right now. You have not given your heart to the Lord. You are not born again. You are not a child of God. Or maybe you were a child of God, but you drew back. You backslidden. But this morning, you want to reconnect back to God. This hour, you want to say, Lord Jesus, I want you to come into my heart to be my Lord and Savior. Right where you are, I just want you to say this prayer. And say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying for me, for taking my place. Say right now, I recognize that you died for my sin. And I ask you to come into my heart to be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me. Father, thank you for paying the price for me to be saved. I right now declare I'm a child of God. Say, say I declare I'm a child of God. Declare I'm born again. And I enter into the realm of wealth and riches from today. I say goodbye to poverty, lack, sickness, and disease. And I enter into the season of abundance in my life, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for doing it for me, in Jesus' name. Congratulations, if you said that prayer, it means you just got born again. Now you are a child of God, your sins are forgiven. God has opened a new chapter in your life. I'm gonna pray for you right now. Father, Lord, I pray for this person, that Lord, this prayer, that this person has prayed will become a reality in this person's life. Let your grace that saved this one keep this person and preserve this person in the name of Jesus Christ. We call it done in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory be to God. Please let me know you said that prayer. I want you to uh, please text me, inbox me, or email me. If you, uh, if, you, if you look at the top or bottom of this broadcast, you're going to see the information there. You can email me, info at hopfan.org. That's I-N-F-O at H O. F F A N dot O R G. That's H O F F as in Frank A N dot O R G. Or text the word Hoffman. That's H O F F A N to six seven eight nine four zero six zero eight zero. Let me know you said that prayer. I'm going to send some materials to you that will help you in your work with God. Glory be to God. And let me know how this message has blessed you. Uh, let me know how it has blessed you. Leave a comment. You know. Uh, let me hear from you. Whether you are watching on Facebook or YouTube. If you are watching on YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube channel and God will bless you. If you are watching on YouTube, on Facebook, like my Facebook page and, you know, like our Facebook ministry Facebook page. God bless you. Let us know. Once you want to be part of this ministry, anywhere you are, you can send us an email. Go to our website, www.offer.org. Let us know you want to be a part of this ministry. Anywhere you are in the world, we are global right now. We can reach out to you and help you grow. If you are listening to this, uh, sermon or this message, you will be a part of our Sunday service, and I know that God has spoken to you, and your life will never be the same Amen. again. As you praise the word of His power, Amen. don't despise God's word. There's power in the word to change your life. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Father, thank you for miracles, healings, and deliverances all over the place. Amen. In the name of Jesus, the power of God is present right now, meeting every need, granting every desire. Of your people healing sicknesses, sicknesses go, weaknesses go, fear go, failure depart, lack go. We release abundance and plenty in Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. Glory be to God. One more time, if you.
to the Lord of oh, Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, I love this world. Amen. We're going to have a, a you know, more fantastic time on Wednesday when I share you know, some closing thoughts with you on this, what the word of his power can do in our lives again. Amen. Today we saw bring increase to our finances and what our resources. Hallelujah. All right. Before we go in this service, let's honor the Lord with our substance. Let's give to God. God has shown us the way to wealth and riches. It's the circle of giving and receiving. Yeah, that's the word of God. There's power in that word. So when you give, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Men shall give to your bosom. Glory be to God. That means you're going to begin to receive when you give. You know, many people want to receive without giving. That's, you know, it doesn't work that way. You are, you are, you are discounting the power. Yes. You are frustrating the power. <laughs> you are making the power of God of non-effect by not doing what he says. So the power can't work. But when you give, you're going to see supernatural money. People don't be giving to you. People you don't know, doors will be opening up to you. Because every time we give, God scheduled an abundant harvest in our future. He scheduled abundance in our future. He scheduled abundant harvest. That's what it means. If there is harvest in your future every time you give. So Amen. today we're going to take our offering. We're going to give our pay our tithes. Give our tithes or pay our tithes, whichever one you can be comfortable with. We're going to give our offering. We're going to sow some seed and we're going to be happy. Amen. Are you ready to schedule your future? Amen. Yeah, so let's give generously today. Amen. You can give online anywhere you are in the world. You, you, you're hearing now, you're part of this service. You can go to our website, www.hoffan.org, H-O-F-F-A-N.org. Click the give button and sow your seed. Pay your time, give the offering. There are many options. You can give by cash app. You can give by Zelle. The number to cash up is 678-294-6494. That's the same number for Zell, 678-294-6494. You go to the website, www.offer.org. You can give your offering. You can give cash for those of us in the house and get ready to give. Please indicate what you are giving, whether it's your tithe, whether it's an offering, whether it's a seed faith, and God will bless you. Amen. Amen. Is anybody paying tithes this morning? The Bible says we should, our tithe is ten percent of our income. It is holy and set apart to God. Lift it up to heaven as I pray. Father, I thank you this morning for your children who have brought their tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in your house. I ask, oh God, that the power of God be released into their life, that the windows of heaven be opened over their life. For our blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Rebuke the devourer for their sakes. Let them become a delightsome land. Amen. Let harvest meet harvest in their lives. In the name of Jesus. Bless them with ideas, strategies, creativity for wealth creation. We thank you, oh God, that you are shown us the power to create and to get wealth and to become rich. So I prophesy wealth and riches into your life in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Those of you in the house, God bless you. Those of you online, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. For those giving online, God bless you as you do that. God is blessing you as you pay your tithes, as you sow your seed. Let's take up our offering. Lift up your offering right now, everybody. Lift up your offering. Father, we thank you. Oh, you can't lift it up. Just lift, stretch forth your hand. Amen. For those of you at home, stretch forth your hand and connect with this grace. Father, thank you for giving us seed to sow. We are, we are operating this circle of giving and receiving. And we're releasing the power to get. Lord, I pray that as we give, let it be given back to us good measure, press down, shaking together, running over, cause men to give our person. We thank you for the harvest that you are scheduled for us in our future. We give you praise and we call it done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God bless you as you drop your offering. Give, and it will come back to you. Good measure. Press down, shaking together, running over, give, and it will come back to you. When you give, give to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God is 
say you read uh, abundance in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right. I'm going to also encourage you uh, to join us for our Bible study on Wednesday. We're going to continue this powerful teaching, praising the God, uh, directing the power of God to another, uh, some other aspects of our lives. You know, we're able to take one today. I think we have two or three more to go. So join us on Wednesday. We talked about riches today, but I want to talk to you about some other aspect of your life that's very important, that the power of God will work in your life. So I don't want to bring, I mean, pull out, you know, the surprise. So join us on Wednesday. Go to our website. We have a link on Zoom. We're on Zoom on Wednesday. Uh, go to our website. You're going to get the link. And also on YouTube. So if you go to our website, you're going to be able to connect. And also we have prayer meeting on Thursday, uh, launch our prayer meeting, Miracle Hour, 12 to 1 p.m. Eastern, launch hour. If you go to our website, you're going to get the time for the prayer, uh, launch our Miracle Hour prayer at 12 to 1 p.m. Eastern. Also on Friday, intercessory prayer at 7.30 p.m. And also personal supplication hour on Saturday, 7.30 a.m., 7.30 a.m., and also Sunday, we'll be back again next Sunday, 10 a.m. online on Zoom. Please be, feel free to be a part of it. We invite you. Share this broadcast and, you know, let many more people be blessed. Amen. Any other announcements? Oh, okay. All right. Let's welcome Mr. E. Praise the Lord, saints of God. This is the last Sunday in the month of November. And as is our custom, the last Sunday in the month, we take up a prophet's offering for our bishop. Uh, the Bible tells us in Matthew 10, verse 41, it says, He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. So this morning we're here to give unto the prophet, and we know that we shall receive from God, as uh, Bishop has taught us today, the cycle of giving and receiving. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, if there's anyone who'd like to join me to sow a seed into the life of our Bishop, let's please stand. Those of you, if you're doing it over, um, those of you by Zoom and online, if you wanted to do it, you can, as Bishop said already, go to hoffman.org and just um, put a note that it's the prophet's offering. Amen. All right. Stand with me. Father, we thank you for your servant. We thank you that you've given him as a gift unto us. We thank you for the good shepherd that you've given unto us, not a hireling. We thank you that he teaches us with the knowledge of your word. And we pray, Father, that as we sow the seed into his life, that it will be multiplied and increased to do whatever he will do with it in the mighty and precious name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Glory to God. God bless you all. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. The Lord will multiply the seed you sow in Amen. Jesus' name. Thank you. God bless you. He that give it to a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. That's another covenant channel that God has used to bless I mean, to bless us. And whatever is your desire. I decree the release of faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, so so we have come to the end of today's service, and it's such a blessing. I thank you for everyone that watched. Please share this broadcast so that many more people can be blessed, and let us know how God has blessed you. Share your testimony. You have a question, a prayer request. We want to be able to pray for you. We want to hear from you. Let us know in Jesus' name. So we're going to say goodbye to those watching on, social, on Facebook, YouTube, and social media right now. Uh, thank God for you. Let's give them a big, big God bless you, church. Father, thank you. Amen. All right. Love you. See you again sometime. Amen.